why wouldn't we want to share what, what we do with people who are, who are not able to, to get out? Let's say they're older, uh, they have some kind of disability, they have some kind of injury, uh, they're not in good enough shape to go ride. This allows them to participate in, in what we care about and love so much. This ride and photography talk is going to be split up into two separate sections, two separate videos. My guest is UC Lyons. He's a founding member of Hilltopper Electric Bikes. So we got into a lot of conversation talking about the electric bikes, full electric bikes, as well as conversion kits and traveling with them. And then we have a whole separate conversation all about his travel photography, as well as combining cycling with his photography. I didn't want to cut anything. Both conversations were equally as, as meaty. There's a lot of stuff to listen to and, and get into. So I didn't want to cut anything. So instead of condensing it down into one shortened video, I went ahead and split it up into two. You can watch one or the other. If one is one topic is uh, more your speed than the other, hopefully you'll listen to both. So let's go ahead and get into it. Welcome. I'm Kevin Wenning. Today, we've got one of our ride and photography talks. I've got UC Lyons with me from Scotland. He now lives in Shanghai, China. He's an avid traveler and can be found taking pictures anywhere around the world. He's a photographer, pilot, and an entrepreneur. This bicycle riding chat has many caps and many talents. He's a founding member of Clean Republic, which is an e-bike manufacturer in Seattle. And his passion for photography started while living in Sendai, Japan in 2012. And it has become a big part of his life. So the reason I wanted to introduce you to, to UC is all of that. I mean, he's got his hands in a lot of things. Uh, and if you've watched any of the, the previous episodes, talks that we've done here, the, the people that share these kind of affinities are never one thing. <laughs> they've, got their, they've got their hands in a lot of things, have a lot of different interests, a lot of different passions. And UC is no exception to that. Uh, and we didn't get into there, but if you jump to your web, jump to uh, UC's website, he's a pilot. And I want to ask you about that first off. Is that, is that where you make your living? Is that where you spend the majority of your time? You're a, a commercial pilot? Yes. Uh, thank you for having me. And um, yeah, for the last 20 years, I've been a commercial airline captain. Uh, I've worked in three different continents for six different airlines. And, um, but the last, uh, just over the last year and a half now, I've been taking a break from it. And uh, I have a young daughter. So family life has taken a, a priority over earning money. I want to dive into you know, a few different things here, but I was curious about that first off. And did you end up in living in Shanghai because that's where family was or that's where the, the work took you or how'd you end up in, in there in that position? Well, actually the, the first, the first reason I came to China was due to bicycles. As a matter of fact, way back in, uh, 2008 when we started clean republic and uh, we started manufacturing these electric bike kits you know the the idea came while uh touring a battery factory here in china so full circle back to that about a decade later i came here for aviation uh, i was flying as a you know as a, a contract pilot here so it, it started with bicycles it, it came through aviation uh full circle and and now it's a bit of both on a daily basis okay so do you fly out of Shanghai or are you commuting to somewhere? No, I'm based here. Yeah, I, I fly for a Chinese company based here in Shanghai. And uh, I've been working, flying in China for the last, the last three years after I've been a decade now in, in Southeast Asia. And I did seven years in, in Japan flying there for a Japanese carrier and now uh, the Chinese airline after spending a, a decade in the U.S. flying as well. You got involved in in the bike company. Was that uh, before or after you were a commercial pilot? Uh, it was after. It was uh, it was a while after. I actually got my pilot's license back when I was sixteen years old. So it all began way back then. And um, yeah, fly, uh, flying took off uh, basically after after college when I when I moved back to the U.S. I grew up in in Northern Scotland, as you know, and um, then aviation took off in in the U.S. So. Aviation came before bicycles, but uh, bicycles were always part of my life growing up as well. So what kind of rider are you? What do you do mostly? So I, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, I'm predominantly an urban rider. Uh, I haven't owned a car in the last 10 years. So bicycles have been the main mode of my, 
my transportation over the last the last 10 years and uh it's made a lot easier of course because living in southeast asia it's it's a, it's a, it's a very practical thing and and bicycles are predominantly used for transportation as opposed to recreation but uh yeah so i ride around the city and i probably spend a, a, an hour at least uh traveling between various places on 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 a city bike during the day uh my 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 primary bike is a electrified bamboo uh one speed and uh i do a lot a lot of road biking as well uh, around shanghai but there's there's no real countryside here very close so mountain bikes uh, tend to sit in various storage units around the world yeah the very first international trip i took was to shanghai and i spent two days on a bike getting around the city yeah and that I, I you know i felt right at home there because everybody else is on a bike too no no reason not to right yeah yeah yeah, it's a much more bike-friendly culture, Asia. Uh, that's for sure. And uh, bicycles <laughs> is a big, big, big part of uh, Asian culture and, and also my life. And, and that, you know, that's one of another goals of mine to, to help bring bicycles to the U.S., which is, uh, you know, cars first. <laughs> so why, so why e-bikes? Why e-bikes? Well, the the single message there is we can uh, change the way we behave um by by riding e-bikes and and uh, in, through certain avenues and and with it, without any kind of sacrifice basically um so we have an improved uh, carbon footprint uh we have you know cost less money uh, it's a much healthier way of transporting yourself around there's a huge amounts of benefits at no, at no cost at no sacrifice for people so i think a lot of Maybe a lot of your audience and, 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 you know, a lot of my friends for sure. You know, there's, there's many avid bike enthusiasts that, uh, that kind of shun the electric bike, um, the whole electric bike thing, electric bike kits. Um, but, but why wouldn't we want to share what, what we do with people who are, who are not able to, to get out? Let's say they're older, uh, they have some kind of disability, they have some kind of injury, uh, they're not in good enough shape to go ride. This allows them to participate in, in what we care about and love so much. That's a, that's a beautiful way to think about it. So the, I haven't spent much time around e-bikes or with anybody that rides an electric bike. But last year I did Ragbri, which is big right across mm-hmm. Iowa here in the U.S. And there were a lot of electric bikes out there, which I was kind of surprised because the average mileage for a day is like 65 miles there. And... I asked a few folks, you know, how do you, how do you do this? Because it doesn't look like your battery is big enough to take you all day. And in most cases, they were riding along other friends who were on their regular bike and they were pedaling as well. So they were assisted and they could get it to go the whole day. Sometimes they would take a a long stop in the middle of the day day to do a charge on their bike. Uh, What's for people who have never been around e-bikes before, what's expected are they just for commuting commuting around town you know commuter bike basically or are they meant for long haul kind of rides like that well they cover all aspects of it i think you know electric bikes they're they're designed as an assist if 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 it's not an assist it's just an electric motor and you're not pedaling then then you've got a scooter basically so uh yeah, it's about. Uh, it's supposed to be about the equivalent of uh, having a second rider pedaling with you without the additional weight. That's probably the best way to to describe it. And yeah, so you you can increase your uh, basically if you if you just engage the motor. I mean, some some electric bikes require you to pedal. There, there's laws like in Europe, for example, there isn't one in America that you actually have to be pedaling for the for the electric motor to engage. But in America, you can just click the button and, and hold it on without pedaling. But uh, but anyway, yeah. If you if you pedal as well, you increase the range of the 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 uh, the battery. You know, threefold, uh, depending obviously on rider weight and terrain and the bicycle. But um, yeah, it's it, it's designed to to be able to for you to go further. Uh, if you if you have it on a lightweight, for example, I've got it on a you know a Cannondale Capo uh, one speed. And, you know, I can ride up 10 degree inclines on, on a one speed and go for a four hour bike ride on a one speed and keep up with the guys on a, you know, a, you know, a road bike, uh, just because I have a small, small little compact five pound battery and a hub motor put on, on, on the bicycle. So 
so yeah, for, for commuting, it's great. You get to work, you're not sweaty. Uh, you know, it gives you a little bit of an extra boost as you not to, not to wear you out so much. And, and for those who want to challenge, it allows you to go further and farther and tougher terrain and whatever you like. So it, it really or, covers the spectrums. In the, in the case I was, yeah, I was thinking of specifically like the Ragbri riders, their partner, their spouse, their friends can come out for a long ride with them, you know, multi-day extended bike ride and be able to do it even if they're not, if they haven't trained properly or they're not used to doing multi-day rides. And same thing, like on my trips uh, for Italy, um, got postponed to next year. We're going to be going in May here in a few weeks, but uh, I've had a lot of guests inquire about, can I get an electric bike? Because I'd like to do these rides, but it looks kind of hilly. I don't know if I can, can do the whole thing. Can I get an electric bike? Yes, we can get those for you. And that makes it more accessible for somebody who originally became interested in the trip because it was a photography based trip. Oh, but you know, I want to get on my bike, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to be able to train properly. So it, it opens up that whole world of, of biking, like you were saying to other people who, you know, maybe wouldn't get on a bike otherwise, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. The people who wouldn't get on a, a bicycle otherwise for, for numerous, numerous other reasons. And, you know, it's the great equalizer. It allows us to, you know, to, to share what we what we're so passionate about and, and it gets more people out there. And, and hence the whole premise of our whole company, Clean Republic, and then the, the Hilltopper, which is our, our brand, um, uh, brand name for, for our electric bike kits and, and our electric bikes as well. The whole concept behind it was to, to help people and to, um, you know, give them, give them access to, to, to bicycles and riding, which, which they didn't have before. So, is developing products that are actually, you know, improving the quality of, of people's life and not just another another uh, extra gimmick. You know, people's people's bicycles are already sitting in their garage. I don't I don't want to make more products to pile more stuff in their garage. I want them to get the bike they already have out there on the road and, and enjoy it and, and get the benefits, the health benefits and all the benefits of it. So since we're talking about the, the bike here, are you seeing my screen there? I am, yes. On our conversation? So yeah. I looked this up uh, last year when I found out you were in, involved with Hilltopper Bikes. I didn't know too much about it. So the first thing that I went to was here as far as how you install it. And I didn't realize because the only ones that I've seen were either a full electric bike with a built-in battery and they look ginormous and they're, they're heavy. Uh, so this was, this was unique to me that you can put on a wheel and take your own battery with you. And then initially, or after I saw this, I was thinking is, could I travel with this? If somebody wanted to bring their own kit with them, and it sounds like you're also familiar with uh, regulations as far as selling and using electric bikes in different parts of the world. Uh, can you travel with this kind of a kit and put it on to other bikes what kind of considerations would people want to think about there uh yeah so the, the the kit allows you to basically put it on on any any bicycle that you have you can uh you can customize it where you can lace in the hub motor it goes in the front wheel first of all which makes things a lot easier and you can lace the, right. the hub motor into whatever wheel you have so yes for for people in 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 america i mean it's it's a great having an electric bike is is, is fantastic for road trips and, and uh, trips around the country by, by car or day trips. But it does become a bit more complicated when you're traveling. So the problem is the battery. If you fly anywhere domestically in the U.S. or you start traveling international uh, with an electrified bike of any kind, you quickly run into a battery problem uh, because it's considered uh, lithium batteries are considered uh, hazmat material. So, so it, you can't... I, I know you can't carry the lithium batteries in, in the plane. Can they go in checked cargo or no? No, they cannot. You need to, you need to specifically have them shipped on a, it's now down to cargo flights. So they've separated cargo flights uh, with um, passenger flights that are carrying lithium batteries. So lithium batteries only go on cargo flights because of the risk of, of fire. And, and uh, it's not saying they're more dangerous, but they've had this problem in the past. So, now they're completely right. separated. So what you would have to do is ship. Uh, for example, if you want to, if you want this kit with you, you would have to ship it separately to your destination, and then put it on your bicycle, and then ship it back again. So 
it's a little bit problematic to to travel with electric bikes these days to to, to be honest and and to be fair uh okay. so it's more of a you know road trip kind of domestic thing in the u.s or whatever country you're in but we and other uh electric bike well other kit manufacturers can ship kits to you and ship batteries to you with no problem at uh, not not a considerable um additional expense but uh, to travel with it yourself is a problem so. so when i do talk to people about take your own bike on a trip uh i always recommend shipping it you know don't yeah. take it on the flight with you you can take it on the flight with you and if you really if that bike is your baby and you don't want to let it out of your sight i understand some people like to fly with their bike but shipping it ahead and then picking it up once it gets there or once you get there uh, is always the easier way because that helps to helps to clear customs. Uh, it's less hassle for you to have to travel with. So I assume you could do that with this. Absolutely. But you would have to know that the, the wheel that you ship ahead and the, and the battery pack and everything would actually mount properly on a bike that you might rent in the country. The, yes. That would be the, yeah, you would. If you're taking your own yeah, if, if you're taking your own bike, like you say, if you're going to ship your own bike ahead of time uh, and, and you want uh, the, the, this kit on it or you ride with this kit on it uh, regularly, yeah, it's no problem. It's only an extra $30 for the, for the hazmat and, and it all goes together, the battery, the, the kit and your bike, and it's, it's there when you need it. And of course, you install it beforehand and you know it all works. So it's going to be good when you, when you get there. But yeah, the only, the only issue is if you try to take your bike with you on the same flight that you're going on, then you have a problem. What, what kind of, uh, like on a kit like this, what are, the, what are the points of failure? Like if I'm traveling with this or I'm on a long road trip, what kind of maintenance or extra parts or things do I have to think about? There is no extra parts. I guess the, the, the biggest thing you have to think about is, uh, you know, making sure that your charger works wherever you're going, going, depending on, you know, it's an adapter for the plug to charge it. That's basically the only, the only thing you, the part you need to worry about. So as long as you have access to electricity and, and can, can charge it up, then, uh, then you're good to go. There is no maintenance, maintenance to it. Okay. So if the battery wouldn't charge for some reason or your voltage wasn't correct and able to get a charge, those would be the main things to, to worry about. Yeah. Th those are, I mean, some kind of electrical malfunction with it is, is, is very, it's difficult to solve uh, where you're at. Uh, you could, I mean, there's a battery, there's a BMS battery management system in it, but they're all combined. Um, it's all combined together into to one package. You, we could ship you out another replacement uh, part, but, uh, you know, if you're on, if you're on a bike trip, it's kind of, by the time you have a shipping and everything else, it's, it's kind of a moot point because you're already home. So, uh, right. but yeah, those three, they're very reliable. They're very, very reliable. And there's not much to, to these kits and, and, and they've been tested a long time and, and we've had a lot of people ride these over the years. So, uh, there's usually not many problems. And of course, if you do have a problem, send it back to us, ship it back to us from wherever you are in the world and we'll fix it. So what's your involvement with the company today? Uh, on a daily basis, uh, not so much. Uh, I'm involved in some very uh, specific projects. For a matter of fact, next week, one that involves photography and uh, cycling, our Discover, which you're showing there on the screen, is coming out later this summer. It's our newest full uh, electric, uh, full e-bike. And uh, I'm doing the photo shoot for it next week. So yeah, a little studio photography, a little flash photography, taking pictures of bikes. That always gets me excited. Working together with the operations team there in, in Seattle. So I don't I don't do mo much of the day to day operations. Um, obviously, I sit on the board as a as a founding member and help guide and steer the company. And and we work a lot uh, as well these days with um, with batteries because batteries is the variable part of this kit and is the, the biggest variable part of most e-bikes. So we are a lithium bike manufacturer too with, uh, with Dakota Lithium as, uh, as another brand of ours. And this hmm. business is expanding much, much faster than the electric, the, the bike business uh, because stored energy is becoming so popular. Yeah, very interesting. So you spun this off as a whole separate brand then basically. 
Yeah, yeah, it started. I mean, we started, we got into lithium batteries because of these, these kits. You know, we started making electric bike kits and, and then we realized that, hey, the big, the big variable here is, is batteries. Can we make batteries in the US better than they're made in China? And can we offer them at a, at a, at a good price? And uh, this, this, this part of the business is, is really exploding. And which is great. It's great for electric bikes too, because um, you know, the better the battery, the further we're going to go at the at a lighter weight. As you can see, the numbers there. Twice two hundred percent power, <laughs> double the range, half the weight. Charges wow. faster. Or, yeah, all, all sorts of applications then. Yeah, yeah, for for any application, yeah. Um, okay, so that I guess that negates my next question. I was going to say, are do you do part of the sourcing in uh, in China there and work on that? And I guess it's U.S. made. Is that what you said? Yes, they they are U.S. made. We still use uh, materials from China, and, and and parts of our products are are still from China. So uh, and and I'm here in Shanghai. So I also do a lot of the, the a lot. I do a significant amount of the work with um, sourcing parts and and supply chain management here here in China. It just makes it easier right. because more to hear. But uh, yeah, we, we we definitely we definitely still work together with China, and um, yeah, most ninety nine percent of batteries still come from China. <laughs> okay, or or at least the components to make the batteries, right? <laughs> components to make them, yeah. Cell money, the the cells and in, in, inside the lithium batteries that are all packaged together are still predominantly made in China. Okay, so when I looked at this last year. I remember I saw just the conversion kits and the actual full e-bike is a new, new product, new product line. Yeah, actually you're not seeing, uh, we currently have uh, two full electric e-bikes that uh, we were selling. We've been selling the last two years. So yeah, we've migrated from, from kits to, to full e-bikes as well because more and more people are getting into e-bikes and basically all our e-bikes are our kit. So we have several different versions of our kit. So we now offer the full bike with, uh, whatever version or combination of, of kit that you want on it. So the different sizes of motor, the different sizes of battery. So we've just uh, combined it all together. So it's a, a one-stop shop. You can buy a full electric bike from us at a very, very reasonable price. You'll see that our prices for, are for you can't see them there, but the full e-bikes are about half uh, of what of our competitors do. Uh, and that's because, you know, there's, we were direct sales from manufacturer and sell it straight to, to, to customers without any middlemen. And, um, you know, we built the thing from the ground up. So, so I'm, of- I'm, I'm curious about that. Like I'm looking here, who builds the frame, who builds the, the group set for it? You know, where does the bottom bracket come from? Where's the cassette? Where does, where does all the, do all the parts come from? The parts are all sourced from established manufacturers, Shimano predominantly. Um, uh, the frames themselves are actually put together in, in Taiwan, so part of China, and the all the work and uh, and the assembly and everything is put together in Seattle, in our warehouse in Seattle. So the batteries are, and the batteries themselves are put together in our warehouse in, in Seattle, Seattle. So along with all the electronics and everything else. <music> this wasn't uh, something that I was really going to get into with you, but I, I find this fascinating, honestly. And a lot of people who watch this are going to want to know about the e-bikes. You know, what, what is the size of the, the market in the U S or is it, is there a world market for electric bikes or is it pr- primarily U S? Uh, no, there is, there is a world market. It's, it's very interesting, right? So um, the vast majority, I mean, 90 plus percent, I would say, of all e-bikes are manufactured in Asia, but they're not used in Asia. You never see anybody riding, almost never see anybody riding uh, an e-bike in, 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 in Southeast Asia. No, Definitely not. see scooters, China, motorbikes, right? or just yeah, regular bicycles. So, exactly. So all of that stuff is manufactured here and it's manufactured for Western markets. So uh, America is a huge e-bike market. Uh, Europe is also actually Europe's ahead of America um, in terms of uh, firstly regulation and, and embracing embracing bicycle cycling as well in general. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, American market is absolutely flooded with uh, e-bike kits, uh, full e-bikes, and most of them are coming from China. 
uh, there are e-bikes obviously made um, in the US like by us, but very, very, very few companies. There are several European manufacturers that make high-end e- make e-bikes, but they're much, much more, more expensive. Are there, are there regulations that are trickling back to you about like how fast it has to be you know, or the, the weight of the bike or anything like that to be uh, legal on these, you know, on these bike paths or on the roads? Yeah, well, I mean, the regulations obviously came after, <laughs> after the e-bike started started yeah. showing up, and and uh, the regulations are very strict in Europe. Uh, there are no regulations basically on e-bikes in Asia, and America's got a blend of uh, the U.S. has got a blend of somewhere in the middle, and uh, you know, basically, there's this 20 mile per hour uh, uh, limit across most states. It's different by municipality and state by state. But generally, it, you know, you can't, you can't make a bike that goes faster than 20 miles per hour or have a, a motor that has more than 750 watts. So, no, I don't, I don't see it. I mean, people start restricting it because they feel it's, it's dangerous where pedestrians are mixing with, with bicycles that are traveling at higher speeds. But, you know, as we both know, right, you can, I can ride my bike faster than I can ride my electric bike, you know. <laughs> so... It's, uh, I, I don't see it as a problem and I, I don't see it as a, um, a, an issue in the U.S. yet at this point, uh, although more, uh, the more regulation you have, um, the more, um, more restrictive things become. But, but, but it is an issue in Europe already. Uh, there are so many regulations. I mean, you, there is no electric bike kit in Europe, basically. You have to, if you have an electric bike, if you put an electric bike kit on your bike, you have to have it certified as a fully electric machine, like a, like a motorcycle. It has um, to be a registered vehicle. Yeah, it has to be a registered, yeah, yeah. All the components together, not just individual parts. Hmm. So, okay. Uh, I, I live in Northern Colorado and Fort Collins is one of the most bicycle friendly yeah. cities in the country. I had yeah. pretty much year after year. And they've started a program to uh, to train people how to ride their bike safely. Yeah, so this is people who have you know never gotten on a bike, and they're wondering you know can I ride on the roads? Can I ride in town? And I, that's the thing that I foresee being a problem. You get an e-bike. You've got a lot of people who have never ridden a bike. They get on a bike path and hit the throttle, and they just don't know how to look out for people, how to pass properly. Uh, so. I can see those kind of things catching on really well. And and fortunately I live in a place where I can get involved in a program like that, where we say, okay, this is how we're going to make it possible. And then talk to Colorado and say, Hey, there's this program. This is how we can train people to do this properly and safely. So the people on the bike paths are safe. So the people on the bikes are safe and, and get it to catch on a little bit more. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, Yeah. That's the way it should be done. It shouldn't be done through regulation. It should be done through, informed safety programs and, and, and awareness and, you know, trying to keep safety first. And, you know, the, 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 the emphasis should be put into the, the, the teaching side of it and the education side of it, as opposed to the, the restrictive uh, regulatory side that, that, you know, uh, may or may not make sense. Totally agree. Yeah. Okay. So we, we got off on the bikes there for quite a bit, which is very cool. I mean, certainly throw in something else if there's something on your mind that you think people need to or want to know. Uh, yeah, well, if anybody, any, you know, anybody has questions about uh, about e-bikes or about conversion kits or whatever, you know, definitely, definitely go to our website here and, and drop uh, drop a line to the to the sales team um, uh, there in Seattle, or you know, they're they're more than happy to answer any questions you have and and. Uh, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of information. Lo- reading reviews too. There's a lot of great reviews uh, from thousands and thousands of people now. I I spent some time yesterday looking through the the FAQ section. You do have a lot of a lot of information there. Kind of the sort of things I was asking you about. Like if somebody doesn't know anything about e-bikes, this actually is a really good resource to go get familiar with what they are and the sizes and prices and parts and yeah, a little little nitty gritty. Yeah, we've been doing it a while, so. Yeah, there's a lot of information and, you know, t- take the time. You know, I, I tell people, take the time to, to, to do the research and, and, and really look, look into e-bike because there are a lot of, there's a lot of cheap stuff uh, on the market too. 
And, uh, and the big, the, one of the biggest things too, is the support, the support that comes with uh, the product, you know, the service behind it is really important because if it, if it doesn't work as, as it should, you, you need, you want the support to be, to be there. I love talking bikes and photography. You've been a fantastic guest. Thank you for taking all this time to talk with me. Uh, well, thank you very much. Kenny. I, I appreciate the opportunity and it's, and, and again, the point is, get out there and try.